because uh, they think the artwork is not a job that can support the family, can survive. So I invite my aunt, my, uh, my brother, sister, my parents from the village, from Barambong to Simrip, over to Simrip. <laughs> On that night, they are crying. Yeah, they are crying. When they saw it was about 250 people come to support my work, and also the exhibition is a success. Most of the artwork is sold out on that night. And when the, the foreigner, they asked to my parents, one of my friends, it translated to, uh, to them. They are crying. This is that I feel like I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about that because when I saw they are crying and must, must something that touching their heart when they saw I'm standing here with the proud people around with the artwork and success. So, uh, so, Mr. Chun Chan Lee, you are an artist that graduated from uh, Far Peninsula Park in Batambong, and now you are based in uh, Simri province. From what I have noted from the paintings, most of the paintings are about the birds, wildlife, and uh, the forest. And in this aspect, I want to ask you, sir, why did you choose uh, this concept as your style for painting? And how did you find yourself drawn into uh, this concept? Uh, this is a good question and uh, bring back the memory that I was the kid. So let me tell you something about um, why is uh, the painting is, all my artwork is about the animal and birds. So um, I've been too many years that to find myself and to find my style as well. Um, the artwork, all the artwork that I choose to do some of the animal and birds on my artwork is because um, when I was the, the child, I grew up in the jungle and uh, I did a bad thing as well. Bad thing, good thing is I, I don't. And um, yeah, I actually kill animal, kill bird to survive for my family as well. So to feed my parents, so this is how we survive in the jungle. And then this is uh, the, the issue that after I back to the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the school, I think back to the past that I have done to the forest and the animal. And I was thinking to do something that show to the world that we have to protect the forest and the animal as well. This is why I choose that. And one that important is I want to show to all the animal that I kill to forgive me. This is what I can do to uh, all of that bird that passed away that I have been killed. So, and, that, and, and another thing is, uh, I just want to share the message to the world as well, to see how important of the nature, how important of the animal, and also my people is the new generation don't know much about animal and especially bird. They, they, some they know, but some they don't really know about that. So this is why I choose the animal, put on my artwork and put the message on it to let people think about it and we start to do things together that to be uh, saving the animal and forest. Thank you. So uh, basically most of the paintings uh, are not only paintings but are dedication that you want to express your sadness or sorrow to the birds that you killed when you uh, were still a child due to the survival mode or something. But, sir, so how, how did uh, you start your uh, journey as an artist? Uh, ha have you always found yourself being into a painting or drawing, or is it just a talent that you want to continue doing? So this is, um, this is that I have a talent when I was a child, and um, I keep continue doing it every day 
on the ground in my books, uh, like a school book. So I did every day. And sometimes the teacher complained me and let me stand one hand, uh, one foot in front of the school because uh, they found their painting or the picture in my uh, school books. And but I don't finish the school like um, because um, yeah, you know, uh, on that time my parent is we are a poor family. We live in the jungle, and we don't have um, we don't have job to do anything. We just farming in the forest that uh, the government give us a land to uh, to farm. And also my father is back to uh, to work in Thailand by construction in Thailand. So. I stopped studying to help my mom and uh, growing rice field and follow the cow to the farm like that. And then my father back, he want me to back to school, but I, I don't want to go back because I already been away from the school is uh, a year already. And my parents think I have to learn something out. They saw my passion that they pushed me uh, to learn how to draw. But on that time, we don't know about art and any what is art mean. We don't know that, so we just want to do like painting and working on like a drawing by a traditional a story of Buddhism and a Ramayana story like that in the pagoda, something like that, to earn money. But after that, I come. Um, my brother bring me. Uh, my father, sorry, my father bring me to the school. And I learn a lot from the school. From uh, so, my father bring me to uh, art school. It's called Fabulousilaba Art School in Barambol on uh, 2006. So that the time that um, like it's a bright the bright day that for me that I I really can imagine that this is the art school in Barambol, and this is a new day for me that teach me a lot that to grow me up to, to see the world bigger than what I have been through to that. So, yeah, and, and after that, that the, the artwork, it will be uh, up to grow and grow and grow more, um, uh, make me know what art is mean, that the thing that I start to know what art it is. So, uh, you began with quite a, a bitter experience and the beginning of the journey. So back to the experience through your school year at Pha Panlu Salapa. What was it like and uh, about your talent? You, you probably met uh, more talented people as well at Pha Panlu Salapa. But how did you go from there to uh, who you are today from the Thank you for period. the question. Um, you know, when I, in the art class, we have a lot of uh, classmates and they got a lot of talent and different style and different, you know, the people, they have a different uh, um, experience and different story. So when we are met in the, this, uh, the art class, so we share the, all the experience, all the, uh, like, we share all the talent to, to each other to, to see um, what talent we have. And also uh, in the school, they, uh, the teacher teaching us to find their way to our talent, uh, uh, like, a, like to find their style. So we don't want to do uh, the same technique or the same style. So we have to learn and ha to find it. So it's a lot of teacher there that they share the experience. It's not, on, not only Khmer teacher. We have uh, like Khmer, friends, US, Japan, Thai, that we, uh, they come to um, do some workshop like month or two months like that. So this is that we found something. So all the students found something of different story, different style, different techniques that we found. So. And in the school, what that I learned is about, um, uh, uh, it's called um, uh, abstract, yeah, abstract. it's abstract. And, but this, I love abstract too, and I, I like collect 
the abstract work from another artist as well. Uh, at the moment, I still collecting. Um, but for me to produce the abstract work, I don't have passion in my my opinion, in my heart, in my mind. I I can do it because um, when I start to do it, it's not my style. But when I start to do like some kind of uh, realistic, that is my style. So I feel like this is mine. You know, at the end of the, the day of uh, the graduate at art school, I really stress so bad. I'm, I really, I, I feel like I gonna fall because uh, I do abstract. And then just like a couple day to finish the artwork, my teacher walked to the room and said, Jenny, if you think this is not your, follow your, your heart, whatever that you want to do, just do it. And then I changed, at the moment, I changed it to be realistic at its calm. So that, I feel like this is mine. So I find myself on that day. So uh, you, you said that uh, many students have kind of different style, but uh, did the school decided to make them take the test on, you know, painting the abstract work, doing the abstract work on the graduation, or did they let the student do their own thing, like uh, you as a realistic uh, paint? Uh, that, so the school always teach, the, um, teach us to find their own way and their own style. But uh, one thing is the school want us to do something new, something that, um, something that the no more artists or before, like a, a, a old generation did. It's not like kind of that. They teach us to find something that new, something that create you, something that different, like, and also to let us find their own way. But the way that they want to do is they want to do more about abstract because this is a kind of the new thing in Cambodia that most of the people don't understand that artwork. So this, the, the, the school want us to learn about that uh, uh, more than the realistic. But at the end of the day, if we cannot do it, so the teacher let us follow what, uh, what we are, so what we love to do, do it. And then after that, even my teacher said he found out. He found it. He found his own style. He found his own feeling. So what he can do. So yeah, I can pass the school. So um, with with that. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, they might want to leave the people or the audience to uh, get the message from the abstract work by themselves. But uh, instead, you want to give a obvious message through your painting, and did. The other students or the teacher know about the story of your childhood so that they can understand your uh, style of painting better? Uh, when I was in school, um, I don't speak out of my, um, my history or my childhood. I don't speak it much. On that time, I'm really shy. It's not not like 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 me like that stay in front of you but before I'm really shy even the closer I never take it off and I don't speak out what happened in my whole life I don't speak it out and I keep in mind all the time so this is why um, the problem for myself as well that um, it's hard for me to find something new because I keep what happened in mind. And um, it's one day that I speak out when I try to, um, I do, um, we have workshop with the friends, women, about performing, like a modern, like a, like a performance, um, the story performance kind of that. So they let us talk about what deep inside that we are hiding. So yeah, I used my story to talk about it. That the time that gave me um, a chance to speak, speak out of my story. 
on that day is all my classmate and teacher is they know the story that what happened to my childhood and what happened to my parents as well. So after that, they understand the work that I have done of what experience that I've been through. But before that, even my my mom, um, a little bit, I. Uh, <laughs> I left home to study. My mom and so they want to take me back because um, we've been in school too many years, like two years after that I'm going to art school. And I don't earn any money to support the family. so. My parents want to bring me back to farm again. So, but I, I try to talk to them. Just let me go, and uh, I will find the way that I can survive myself. And I continue to study. On that time, I'm already feel deep to this the, the artwork. I don't want to leave the art school. It's hard for me because uh, one is. I want to support my parents as well, but one, I don't want to give up of my dream. And then I keep talk to my teachers about that, and yeah, he helped me out. He 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 talked to the sponsor that um, sponsor to the school, and they help us to uh, buy supply and food like that. So yeah, I got uh, food at, at at school. So I ate at school. So every lunch and dinner, I will have lunch at school, and they also give me a room to stay there. Don't have to go back home. But the the point is, I don't like to sleep on in bed with another. So this is the thing that I'm really shy to sleep in bed with another. I have to go back home. Ride bicycle back home about 30 kilometers from the school to the house. Every day. So. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I I will have lunch at school. So this is uh, helped me a lot that I can say to my mom and my dad. So they let me continue to study. This is um, it's a hard time as well that I. I if I I give up on that time, I will never find. Who I am, and I cannot follow my dream. I see. So uh, you decided to keep going with uh, your passion about painting, and your family still uh, supported you throughout the way. And and now that you graduated and you have become who you are today, based in Simrip, how does your family? Feel about this? Are they? Uh, are, are you guys still keeping in touch with each other, or somehow? So? Thank you for the question. It's a lovely question. <laughs> um, give me emotion. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my parents never see my work when I was in art school. They never see my work. After I graduated, I moved to Simri. But I have no job, and I don't want it. I don't know to do about artwork. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I come here to find a job, and then it's not the place for me to do anything in Simbiri. I'm go back to work on board for two years, like bring the customer from Simbiri to Vietnam and Vietnam to Simbiri. I work on board, but I still working watercolor on board. So like a Titanic. Do a sketch, do a portrait for the client, and then after that, I have money from that work, from that job. I come back to Simrip and try to do a solo exhibition. I have one friend that we have uh, met every Sunday morning at the park to bring the dog to meet each other like that, and we talk. So he found my Facebook page. He saw my watercolor painting of the bird, and he interesting with that. And he asked me, "Chani, if uh, are you interesting? If you want, uh, if I want you to uh, do exhibition in my hotel, and I feel like, wow, that will be uh, my pleasure to do it. 
So uh, I'm appreciate that if you made it for me. So yeah, we sign a contract, we do it. So first solo exhibition is uh, in Simri on 2016. Yep, that at uh, the Avery Hotel. So that is the first solo exhibition. And also this is the first time that my parents saw my work. <clears throat> I invite all of them to see. The main point is I want them to change what they are thinking of me and artwork because uh, they think the artwork is not a job that can support the family, can survive. So I invite my aunt, my, uh, my brother, sister, my parents from the village, from Badambong to Simrip, over to Simrip. <laughs> On that night, they are crying. Yeah, they are crying. When they saw it's about 250 people come to support my work, and also the exhibition is a success. Most of the artwork is sold out on that night. And when the, the foreigner, they asked to my parents, one of my friends, it translated to, uh, to them. They are crying. This is that I feel like I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to talk, say about that because when I saw they are crying and must, must something that touching their heart when they saw I'm standing here with the proud people around with the artwork and success. So uh, it, it's, it, it's been quite a journey. You, you've been struggling, but you are also the definition of never give up and practice make perfect as well. Uh, how, how about this? Uh, you have been like painting from your, uh, let's say, imagination and aspiration that you got from uh, your childhood, especially uh, this concept. But let's say if you are to promote like the same deep, because you are now based in same deep, mm -hmm. uh, there can be a reasons for that. There can be reasons that you chose to settle down in Simrip and the reason that you opened your uh, studio in Simrip as well. So if you are to promote the tourism or other aspect of Simrip, so how can you do it through your painting? Uh, this is a good question, and especially in Simrip. Um, you know, in Simrip is a tourism uh, uh, province. So, um, First of all, I've come here, it's not about thinking of the, the artwork or anything about tourism, it's just a uh, to find market. But, uh, you know, for the tourism, it does help a lot to bring um, the tourists to visit Simrip. We not only, we know that the main point is the temple, the Angkor Wat. Uh, Bayan Tabrom uh, Temple like that. So most of the, the tourists, they come to Simrip, they want to see the history and see the temple, to see the, um, the, the traditional thing in, in Simrip. But you know, um, this is not the only thing that the tourists will visit. If we want to promote and we want to, uh, for um, the tourists come to Simrip and stay longer, we have a lot of things to, uh, to show them, you know. Um, the tourists come to see me if only stay one night or two nights at least, or maybe uh, longer than that, three, three nights in Simrip, because they go to see the temple and then they finish, they fly back, or they go to another country. But if we uh, propose more than that, we promote more than that, more than the temple, the people living style, hiking, camping, and uh, cooking class, art workshop, like workshop with a, a, like a visual art like that, and the traditional dance, uh, like a modern dance. We have a lot in Simri, but we kind of Produces or promoted by their own company is not helping. Uh, we need to help each other to promote all of that, include with the temple. That 
to have their the the tourists stay longer than what they are supposed to do before. You know that I live in here is some uh, uh, 12 year, it's about 12 year, and what I talk to the the client that visit, they stay only one or two nights at least. They're not longer than that because they don't know what to do after the temple. So at day time they can visit the temple. Night time they can go to uh, the circus, to the theater, to go to the uh, traditional dance, like an old traditional dance uh, in the it's near Watbo Road, something like that. Is they have a lot that they can visit, do cooking class at the village, or go to kind of the work with the farmer, try to. Get more experience from the Khmer people. This is really interesting for them. If we are uh, try to let them know that, so you know, um, most of the client they come from the modern art, a modern city, and like client, like a uh, high end, like kind of that. So sometimes they want to try something that simple and local, and they like food. We are like to taste something different. And when they are visit in Cambodia, they want to try the Cambodian food, right? Like if I go, I travel to another country. I I would love to try uh, the food in their country because I want to know what taste it is and what kind of uh, culture that they made food with from. So this is we have to show that to the uh, to the client. So uh, this might be a bold question after what you said. Uh, you know, your style has been about uh, environment or mm-hmm. social issues yeah. that I've seen about the alcohol and 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 okay. other thing that I kind of get a message of uh, social issue and freedom related to environment, birds and uh, animals. But have you ever consider changing your style? My artwork when I start to do the artwork, the first time that I I do it with the Um, plastic, that you know that the issue, the big issue in, it's not in only in Cambodia. Around the world is it's about the issue of plastic. So I'm working on the plastic, and uh, uh, combine with the nature and animal together. So this is what I try to send a message to uh, on the on my artwork to the the people around the world, that to see what what. Issue is in their own, their own country or on uh, on Earth. So the message is: we want, I want them start to think about it and let do it together to change the world to be a better place. So this is the issue in Cambodia that we still see, keep seeing the plastic around the city. But now it's a lot of a new generation that they did. They clean it up. They know how to be themselves. It's look clean, you know. Yeah. So I think there I saw the new generation look like they know how to make themselves look beautiful. So when they know how to uh, make them look beautiful, They will know how to clean it up too. So, um, and also uh, related to um, the nature that we have been to to see um, the climate change. Right um, at the moment, we have a lot of things that's going on: flooding, storming, like that. So this is the issue as well from the the nature that they are talking back. When we are destroyed, so when this, we destroy the earth, one day they will bring it back. They will give it to us. If we don't do anything, we don't stop it. We don't try to do something that to uh, grow it up, like grow the tree back and uh, clean up the plastic. You can see the ocean, uh, river around the. By the edge, you see a lot of plastic bottle and everything back there. So that is um, the problem too. It's not only us, to the animal as well that they live in the ocean, live in the uh, water, uh, uh, river, and the animal in the jungle as well. That they got, I don't know what it's called, like a 
it's not uh, that we run out of the oxygen that we get more of the what is kind of the, it's called the 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 bad air some kind of that uh, carbon dioxide yeah yeah carbon dioxide. so we have to do something that my work is trying to do is more it's not only about um, nature but it's about the issue as well but it's not only the issue that I talk about but I do something of um, like a, um, combined with the my traditional and uh, like the temple a little bit some of the new work that I add to but uh, yeah, like your question I did I want to change the style or whatever and I said you know it's hard to change the style because when we are uh, find our own way it's hard to find our own way and it took many years to find our own style and technique so if I want to change it it just uh, added a little bit a little bit to make sure that the follower or my uh, fan that they follow up my work they recognize my work so if I change it they just saw a little bit change it on it it's not too much so I, I, I cannot change my style from the realistic to the abstract in one day. So it's just need to move on a little bit, a little bit. Like you step on the stair, you need to step one step by, uh, uh, one step by one step. It's not kaboom like that. So um, are you planning to display your paintings on the, uh, in the uh, international exhibition? Let's say, when, and if so, like, what kind of painting would you want to show to the uh, foreigners? Uh, and that, and those paintings speak about uh, the Cambodians. Let's say, with the purpose to uh, attract the tourists to come to Cambodia. Uh, I think if we are doing some kind of the exhibition overseas and we want to promote Cambodia. I think the name of the Cambodia will always show up, you know. If even the artwork is not really uh, connected to the uh, culture, but when the name is going there, they will know that the artist is from Cambodia, what country it is, so they want to find out. I have an uh, artwork that I'm showing in Paris and also in US, uh, in uh, Seattle. Also, I have artwork uh, showing in Japan a couple of months ago, and also in Singapore. Um, <clears throat> so my work is um, always with the animal, but when you look deeper in, in the painting, you will find out something that, a small thing in the painting that show about the Cambodian, show about the Cambodia, that, um, I add a little bit small thing into that to make, to let the people that are looking deeply, it's not only looking just the whole pieces, but when they go in closer, they will find out something. And uh, like uh, the painting behind me, that I do some animals, but the uh, kind of the history of the three head of the elephant, that I think I just talk about that will know that it's Cambodia as well. Because uh, it's called Dumrai Kabal Bay Kandang Sampon. They will know that it's Cambodia. Um, it's for Cambodian people, but for the foreigner, they will want to know and they have question mark on it. What the hell is that? So we explain that. So we have to explain that this is um, the Cambodian uh, history, the Cambodian uh, uh, old traditional. So we just uh, combine with the modern art two together. So, um, and some of the artwork is with the temple as well. I know, and when the tourists come to Cambodia, they will saw the temple a lot. Uh, at least they go to the, see the temple and then they saw the artwork of the temple. But it's not really, uh, not much about animal and something that deeply than that, like a, what, how, what can I say, like a, a spirit in the pieces, uh, in the painting. So what I do, 
I want to do some kind of you can see, but the thing is deeply the spirit of the pieces. When you keep looking at it, you will find the spirit inside of this, and you find the meaning of this, and you always have a question mark on it, and you ask yourself, what is that? And you will find out by yourself as well, and then you will ask the artist, what does that mean? And when the artist told you, you will feel like, oh, it is close to what you think. Thinking, this is the message that I want to share. So I don't want to like you write a book, you will clear everything, right? You will, when you wrote in, you will clear everything on the the writing. But the painting is not like the book that uh, will clear everything. It will be find out something. The meaning it will be deep inside, and you will have your own feeling on that pieces. Even that is not really far, not really near to the meaning of the artist, but is like similar. So uh, usually, I I see that most of the paintings are in big size. So how how many days do you spend on painting one piece of work? Uh, it depends on the the uh, the size is one point, and the modern that I put into the painting is another one point. So, if the painting is more detail, and it's a lot of um, animal in that, it took me too long. It's about. Two or three months to finish one pieces, and some is going to be four months. So when the big, uh, when I work on the big pieces, uh, let's say 120 by 160 centimeter, I took it's about three months to do one pieces. So because it's, uh, you know, my work is more detail and keep detailing. If it is not detailed, I feel like nothing finished yet. So I have to uh, spend more time to work on it. But uh, did, did you have any problems while you, you were painting a piece? Like, uh, what are the problems that you have along the way? You know, um, when I get stressed from the artwork or any tr- trouble in the artwork, uh, like I said before, um, I do kind of a, a weak person thinking. So when is I have a trouble with working on the painting or stress about that, I will go to club or go to the bar. That is the wrong thinking that I have done. But after, after that, I feel like I do something out that to make me more confident and fresh, that to make myself feel free and to get more uh, idea from what I want to do. So after that I stretch from the artwork, I will hiking, especially to the mountain camping in around my country, Cambodia, so especially, yeah. Because in Cambodia, I have a lot of place that we never seen, and it's beautiful. So if you just take one or two days, go there, that release all the stuff out, and we can come back to work like no more. So this is what I do right now. So when sometimes I stress, if I cannot work, I will keep my work away, took my motorbike, pack my bag, go to Brebihir, go to Bandiminje, or around the country to relax in the jungle. This is what I, I do. You know, when you go to the, the forest, you will find something out that you've never seen. you never seen. The small thing is beautiful. The big thing is the light thing that you, rem- you never imagined. So you should do it. Thank you, sir. So uh, you find yourself more comfortable in nature and surrounded yourself by uh, the greenery in the forest rather than uh, a bar at night or choose alcohol uh, 
uh, instead you choose to uh, be with the nature to clear your mind when yeah. you're stressful with uh, with the work. One one last question about the studio right here. That uh, just I think painting might require a great deal of patience and and uh, silence. So you might want to work in a quiet workplace. So why did you decide to open the studio next to uh, the Atria Temple right here? Thank you, thank you for the question. Um, you know, uh, you know, uh, the artists always need a quiet place, right? Before I I live close to town, and it's a noisy place, like uh, around the bar area and the sound of the car motorbike. So I keep moving around. I like I go to uh, live another place is called Sambua Village. So go there quiet, but it's it's hard for me to come out because so far from town and also on that time the road is not really smooth. So I think I need to find a place that really peaceful. Especially this area is uh, called Wat Atwe area. The close to what Atwe Temple, uh, Atwe Temple. So this is kind of that I want because I need a spirit, I need a peace, I need a quiet place that I build a studio here. That sometime I just want to go to meditation at the temple, I can go there. Because uh, there at the, the temple they have uh, all this pagoda as well. And the monk and the, the old uh, uh, generation, they go there to pray and uh, they really uh, follow the um, old traditional, like they're wearing uh, the white dress with the kaban, it's called kaban. So go to the pagoda and uh, spray there. And sometimes I go there because it's peaceful and quiet. No, not too many tourists that know about that place and not many tourists that visit there. So I can go there to meditation sometime. And um, and the good place for me as well that to work on the, the place that have peace and quiet sound just the frogs, the birds and the chicken like around this area. I love it. So uh, basically it's kind of an ideal place to uh, work on your concentration for the painting. Do, do you recommend this kind of place or this particular place for the people who wish to draw or do their painting? Outside, I think um, I think have many places that the painting uh, that the the people that want to draw is in the place that have peace and quiet place around the this uh, around the Simrip city. They have a, a nice place. Sometimes I go to uh, far away from that, go to uh, uh, near restaurant like that, that quiet place. But this area, if you want to be face peaceful. So go down there to the lake around that temple area and go to the mountain, but don't climb up to the mountain. There will be a lot of people, like a local, they will go there for um, a snack or something that every evening time. So um, go to the lake. You will find something that to do too uh, with the, like a floating village that you can throw on board. I do sometimes that I climb up on board and working on that floating to the, the lake. And sometimes I go to the farm by there, like a, a lotto farm that work with that watercolor and do some kind of sketch like that. That is a nice thing that for the people that want to throw kind of that, go to the landscape, go to the lake, go to the mountain, and it's really enjoy. So uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chani, for uh, sharing with us your story about your childhood and all the way your journey to Penlu Salapa and finally your uh, current work uh, in Simbri province.